ask about any market and get an answer. Only for members and only from marketclub.com. Hello traders and Market Club members everywhere. Adam Hewison here coming to you from the digital studios of Market Club. And we're going to start off pretty much where we left on Friday and that's looking at the four stocks that we said we're going to take if they close well. The first stock is Biogen, closed at 468.63. Then Nike closed at 102.58. And Darden Gardens closed at 67.49 and Lennar closed at 51.35. These are important because I want to show you why you should have avoided some of these trades later in the day. We did this around around 12 o'clock on Friday so again the market had several hours to change and it did change and that's what I want to share with you today. We're looking at Biogen. Now remember we said that closed last week on Friday 468.63. Now look at where it closed on Friday later in the day. It picked up several more points. It closed at 476.08. So you would have taken this trade. Now it's down today. It's down 1.89%. You have to look at percentages as opposed to dollar moves. If you look at dollar moves, you say, okay, it's down, you know, nine dollars. But in percentage terms, it's only down 1.89%. Let's move on. Now Nike closed on Friday at 102.50, and when we looked at it, it was 102.58. So we did take this trade, and Nike is up today, only 0.21%. Not too bad, but remember we take our profits on Tuesday on the opening. Our next stock was Lennar. Now Lennar, when we talked about Lennar in our recording, Lennar was trading at 51.53. It actually closed. Lennar, when we looked at our screen at around 12 o'clock on Friday, Lennar was trading at 51.53. Well, it actually closed at 49.65. So it did not close well and we would not have taken this this trade even though it's up today 0.62 percent so again that's something we would have avoided the Lennar trade. Now Darden Gardens closed at a close to its high in new high ground very happy about that that closed pretty close to where we got where it was closing about maybe 80 cents from the where we said and it's up today four percent over four percent so even if you take the loss of the Biogen of 1.89 percent and you look at the gain here you're still ahead using the strategy and we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow so tune in tomorrow morning we'll be looking at the opening of these stocks and see how we did how we did so let's move on the big news today of course is silver giving us a signal at 1691 at 1687 right now that's pretty much flat to where we got the signal and it's a plus 90 all of the trade triangles are positive in this particular market now the one thing I want to share with you I'm going to go into a simple line chart you can click here line graph this is the key level right around the 1850 area now if you look at this so it looks like it came back came back down and it's turning back up now turning back up from this area 1550 to 1850 is obviously three dollars so if we take that three dollars and flip it over from this level, it gets us 21.50, which is pretty much where we were back in July of last year. So I think that's a very good target zone. Again, all of the trade triangles are positive, indicating higher prices for silver. The question is, is this going to pull up gold? It could well do that. Now look at the RSI over the 50 line, very positive. Everything looks good for silver. So let's go on to our next market. Not a dissimilar picture in gold. If you look at the the potential of the double bottom we talked about here, it was right here, and also the pivot point here. So 1300 is obviously a very big number for this market to get out and over. Uh, if it does that, you're looking at at, a, at least $150 above that area. So you're looking at 1450. But look, we still still do not have any buy signals okay now the buy signal in this market I'll give you the buy signal we'll be looking for this week and if we do have it if it does come in I'm going to give you an alert on the blog itself so let's just go to a candlestick chart and we're going to go to a weekly chart because we want to see a weekly trade trial kick in and you're really looking at the point we'll be turning around in this market is going to be 12 23 38 okay I'll write that down for you. If we see gold anytime this week breach that level, now again it's quite a ways from here you're looking at forty dollars or so. Uh, if we see gold go over this level we want to be a buyer of gold. That will turn the weekly trade triangles around. Now we already had the daily turned around and that's the important thing. See we said 1164 to get out of any short positions and you would have done that and you would have taken a profit 
and you'd be on the sidelines right now because it's a 55 range indicating a trading range. The other level to look at, and let me scope this out, and go to a daily chart. We're just touching the 50 line on the RSI, and if you look back down here, we've just made the turn on the and the MACD. Very important areas. We're, now look where the MACD is com coming from. It's coming from the previous low period. So there's the double bottom again in, on the MACD. So let's see how that plays out. But if silver keeps going, gold is going to follow. NASDAQ closed very high and new high ground. You know we, we are bullish on this. We think it can go higher than where we are now, 5150 to 5200 is our target zone on the upside. And I think there's nothing stopping the market right now that I see until it begins to anticipate the rate hikes. This is the Dow, uh, new high ground uh, in the sense that we followed through from last week. We just have a little bit of resistance over the market right now around the, I would say, the 18.3 level. Uh, if we get over that level, then it's off to the races. But again, it looks as though we're going to see this market at least challenged there. We're over the 50 line. Everything looks as though the market wants to go higher. We're just waiting for our weekly trade triangle to kick in. And if we look at the weekly trade triangle on the Dow, we're looking at, so let me see here, well, it's actually over 18,300. That's what we're looking for to kick in. So let's see how that plays out. Much the same picture on the, on the S&P 500. If we see the market go over 2,120, which is another eight points where we're from here, uh, you want to be on board with this market because it's going to start to accelerate to the upside. The euro dollar is trying to put in a low here. I'm not sure how successful it's going to be. Again, you would have been out of this market uh, at 106.31. It's 108.97 right now, so you would have taken a nice profit on the short side. You'd be out right now waiting for a confirmation of either the weekly trade triangle to go green or you're looking for this to turn red the daily. So let's go on. Last market, this is a weekly chart on crude oil. You can see it's just begin sort of flattening out. What's really interesting to me on the crude oil is the Saudis have come out and said, we're going to pump more oil or whatever it is, but the market did not go down. That I think is a very strong signal that something's afoot here. Now again, the trade triangles are negative trend-wise. Timing-wise, you should be out of this market from 46.81. It's 46.83 now. And the other thing to look at here is the PSAR at 47.43 is a key level. If it hits 47.43, that'll turn this little market over the dots and maybe to the upside. We'll see what happens. But again, you're getting very close to seeing an MACD turnaround. So lots going on. This is going to be an important week in the market, so stay tuned to Market Club. And we'll do our very best to keep you up to date with our trade triangles and what's going on in the market. I'm Adam Hewison from Market Club. Have a great trading day, everyone.